Dear students, uh, inshallah we are going to discuss chapter 5 which is about decision making and this means first we have to discuss the relevant information uh, that's going to be used into our own modeling for decision making. Uh, we have two main items related to uh, the concept of relevance. Uh, first, it means uh, it's related to the future, and second, it means it will provide a difference in between or among alternatives. Uh, so any cost that happened in the past as a fixed cost is going to be irrelevant and not to be used into our model. Uh, uh, so when we speak about that, we are going to discuss our own decisions. First, we will get the example related to the relevant cost availability, uh, which is example uh, 528. In this case, uh, there will be a discussion about that you are heading to choose one out of two theaters, uh, both with a, a related cost of entrance or a fees to enter the uh, theater, which uh, is going to be the first with $5 and the second for $7. Uh, and you can get also uh, a popcorn, which is uh, $3 per uh, person. Uh, so when you make a decision, you can find that you are going to head for the item that will happen in the future and will provide the difference, which is going to be the fees related to entering the th theater, which is going to be five or seven. And as you have a um, limited budget, you can choose the five, not the seven especially if the quality of both of uh, the movies uh, will be the same uh, from your own uh, perspective or your own um, idea uh, and with no other differences any other item is going to be uh, fixed in this case so the decision be based upon the lowest cost available and neglecting the uh, cost that uh, provides us with no differences or no differentiation base in between the two alternatives. And then we are going to understand this case uh, in another meaning by understanding uh, that if we are going to uh, a Cordell company which makes and sells a 1 million seat covers, uh, the total manufacturing cost is going to be uh, 30 million or a $30 per unit. Uh, the direct material will be 14 million and the direct labor is going to be 6 million, which means the direct cost mainly will be 20 million dollars. Uh, this means uh, we have to understand that the other part of the manufacturing cost uh, will be divided into two items. One will be a variable cost and the second is going to be fixed cost. Of course, we can only include uh, the items uh, that's going to be as of variable cost. Uh, why? Because this part, uh, when we are to uh, take the decision, will vary according to the variation of uh, the volume. Uh, but the fixed cost happened in the past and will not vary uh, from the future perspective uh, because they are sunk, as we all know. Uh, so this means that we can add to the 20 million, uh, 4 million dollars additional. So this means that the cost per unit is going to be a 24 million divided by a 1 million. This means a $24 per unit. So uh, when we are to speak about what we are going to do, our own decision here is about what we call a special order. It means that uh, a customer is going to uh, come to me and ask me if I can produce a certain product that I do produce already uh, through my own production line. Uh, but with a slight differences related to the finishing uh, level um, and this of course from his own opinion will be uh, by offering a lower cost than the usual uh, sorry a lower price than the usual price uh, offered uh, in the market uh, so if i'm going to sell uh, the unit uh, for uh, 30 dollars uh, per unit or for whatever per unit He's going to offer me less than this price. So the special orders goes for 100,000 uh, units as uh, provided to your slide uh, with a price of 26 per unit.
Of course, when we do analyze our own cost, as we mentioned earlier, it's going to be $24 million divided by the 1 million units. This will provide us with a $24 per unit as of a variable cost. So according to that, we are going to receive $26 as, an, uh, as a price offered by the customer and our cost is going to be 24. So this means we will achieve two additional dollars as of a contribution. And this is accepted from the perspective of the producer as these two dollars will achieve um, a part to cover uh, or additional uh, contribution to cover uh, the fixed cost that happened already in the past and we are trying to recover it through increasing our own production. And then um, to understand this, uh, we can go to another case, which is 5A2. Uh, 5A2 related to the special order. In this case, as you can the problem, um, you have first to analyze the provided data, which is given to you as uh, absorption uh, methodology. And in this case, you have to analyze both items of cost given to you as COGS first and then as of selling and administrative expenses. These two items must be um, analyzed into two categories. The first one will be the fixed cost and the second one will be the variable cost. And of course, you can see that uh, you are given information about the fixed cost in each and every one of these two categories. For uh, the first category related to the column which is called without special order which means we are going to uh, rewrite our own data given to us but under uh, a contribution approach uh, so we are going to analyze the cogs of goods of goods sold or cogs which is nine million four hundred and fifty thousand dollars into two categories one of them is going to be fixed which is given already to you as a three million six hundred thousand dollars and then by deducting this amount from the total cox which is 9,450,000, you can reach the uh, variable cost which is provided into that column uh, which is uh, $5,850,000. And by dividing this amount uh, by the units produced, we can come up with the variable cost related to each and every unit which is a one dollar ninety five cents or one point ninety five dollars per unit and we can use that for future planning and the preparation of our uh, decision related to accepting or rejecting the special order and then sir you can head to the other part which is selling and administrative expenses and uh, which is provided to you as a four million three hundred and fifty thousand dollars and this amount when you analyze it according to the given data, which is uh, fixed and variable, you are provided the fixed as of uh, $3,300,000. Uh, so this is given to you. When uh, deducting this amount from the total amount, which is $4,350,000, you can come up with the variable cost, which is $1,050,000. And this before, bro before dividing it by the number of units, we must understand that this amount including two different uh, types of variable cost. The first one is based upon um, the part related to uh, commission, which is based upon not totally the, uh, uh, the volume or the units of activity, but it's related to a percentage based upon the uh, selling price or the revenue, which is given here as 3%. So we are going to multiply the $1,050,000 to uh, 3% or by, sorry, 3%. You will, you will come up with the amount which is a $4,000,000, uh, sorry, a $477,000. And the remaining amount from the $1,050,000 will be a $573,000, which is going to be total variable cost divided by uh, the number of units provided, which is 3 million units. Uh, the cost per unit will be 0.191 uh, dollars and this is going to be used also in the future when applying our own result uh, uh, to uh, choose or not to choose to accept the uh, special order uh, provided to our own company uh, when we look to the analysis provided to that case we will find that 
uh, new additional items uh, is going to be required in the future, but when uh, the manager discussed the uh, special order, uh, he was uh, asked to provide a logo uh, printed upon each and every pen he's going to provide as of accept when accepting the special order, which is going to increase the variable cost per unit by $0.35. And this means we are going to adjust our own uh, variable manufacturing cost from 1.95 plus 0.35 or 35, sorry. This will lead to $2.3 uh, per uh, unit. Uh, but no, va no other uh, costs to be um, added or dealt with, but neglecting the uh, 3% as of uh, commission uh, relating to marketing as of there will be no marketing in the special order according to whatever given information in that case in other cases you may find that uh, there will be uh, additional uh, items related to marketing selling administrative whatever as given to your case uh, of course it will be only variable items but uh, uh, make sure that you are not too repeat or uh, allocate any given fixed cost happened in the past but you only will add fixed costs that will happen in the future which means um, as we can say buying a certain machine to accept that order or to uh, apply that order or to provide that order uh, or uh, as another uh, case uh, accept a flat rate of marketing or hiring some expertise uh, from personnel uh, according to a certain payment uh, for the year or for the special order. This means you can add a one row under the fixed cost related to manufacturing or selling administrative. It will be a special fixed cost or related to the uh, special order fixed cost. And then by uh, getting to the second column, which is the effect of a special order, by multiplying the units related to it, which is 140,000 units, uh, to the um, cost per unit or the price per unit, you can find the total. So when multiplying the 140,000 to the 4.36, we can get to the total revenue. And then by multiplying 140,000 to 2.3, uh, we can get to the $322,000 and the same uh, by multiplying the 140 to the uh, 0.191, you can reach the 26,740. By calculating the total or uh, adding uh, the two costs together as of manufacturing and sales relative variable cost, we can reach the total variable cost or expense, which is going to be the uh, 348,740. Uh, 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 this means uh, when matching it with the revenue expected from that special order of 610,400, uh, we can reach the uh, contribution margin uh, net uh, positive uh, for uh, 261,660. And this means we are going to increase our own contribution margin. This means a positive contribution margin, and that's the base to accept uh, the special order. In this slide, sir, you can find the calculations related to analyzing the case apart by part, as I did mention earlier in the previous slide. And in this one too, and then how did we come up with our own decision? And if you are asked to calculate as uh, in this case, uh, what will be the um, increasing percentage or what will be the percentage of uh, increase uh, related to the contribution margin or related to the net income? You can manage it by uh, dividing the 261,660, which is the additional contribution or additional net income because there is no fixed cost. Uh, by the um, basic uh, profit net operating income, which was nine million and a hundred thousand dollars, this will lead to a twelve, uh, almost 0.5 percent uh, additional income. So this means uh, it will be uh, accepted uh, from the perspective of 
achieving uh, a profit or a net operating income that will lead to covering more fixed costs that happened in the past. Now we are going to uh, the other type uh, of decisions related to that chapter, which is going to be a pricing decision. And pricing means uh, we are based upon cost mainly, and we are going to add what we call a markup. And for doing this, you must apply a four steps. I'm going to make them easy for you right here. The first step is by calculating the total revenue. And the second step, and of course, the total revenue is going to be total cost uh, plus the expected or, uh, or required net income. And then the second step is by uh, settle the cost base, which is going to be um, required into the uh, case according to the base that we are going to uh, use to calculate the markup uh, according to it. And then uh, number three, we are going to calculate the markup as an amount which is going to be uh, number one and minus number two, which is going to be uh, total revenue minus cost base. And then we are going to calculate in number four, the percentage of the markup, which is going to be by dividing the markup that we calculated in number three, uh, dividing it by the uh, cost base, which is uh, calculated in number two as required. Uh, so this means now we have a markup, which means that we are going to use this markup uh, any time that we are going to produce our own product after calculating the actual cost, we can multiply to this markup and adding this amount to the cost base to reach the price required uh, for selling the product in the market. And uh, when we look here, uh, we uh, can see that uh, these steps is going to be or are going to be applied, sorry, in the uh, next level according to the cost base. And of course, if you are to look to this base, it will go, it's maybe a variable manufacturing cost, it's maybe a total variable cost, it's maybe a full cost, it's maybe a total manufacturing cost. So the cost base will be required uh, through the case according to uh, the provided information. Uh, what we call here is called a, a cost plus, and a cost plus means a markup, and this is what we use a markup in that case. Uh, so when we head to the case uh, 542, 542 is providing us with two alternatives uh, to produce and sell under a one price, which is uh, 12.5 or under uh, $10 per unit. Uh, of course, when we are going to uh, use the price 12.5, we are going to sell 6,000 units only. We are, when we are to apply at $10, we are going to sell 10,000 units. And of course, uh, to go for uh, that level, we must calculate the contribution margin for each level. Uh, for level number one, which is $12.5 per unit, we can find that the contribution is going to be $6.5 per unit. But when we go to the second level, which is going to be a $10 per unit price, this will lead to a $4 per unit as of a contribution margin. If you are going to take our own decision, this is going to be not correct because we are basing our own decision upon the contribution margin per unit, neglecting the volume, the total units that's going to be produced and sold. According that, there will be a variation. In the first uh, level, we can only sell 6,000 units. In the second level, we can sell 10,000 units. So if we are to get to the total contribution margin, in the first case, by multiplying 6,000 units to the uh, $6.5 per unit contribution, we can find that the total contribution is going to be at $39 million, uh, sorry, sorry, $39,000. Uh, but when we get to the second level, which is 10,000 units, uh, 10,000 units multiplied by the $4 as of a contribution margin per unit, we can find this lead to a total contribution margin, which is a 40 thousand dollars and this mean uh, this means we can choose the second alternative not the first um, which means the first choice if we are to prepare our own decision based upon a per unit is going to be a mistake because we are neglecting the volume 
which uh, is going to be the base for our decision because uh, when preparing any decision related to planning we are based upon the volume the capacity uh, so this is very important and now heading to our last uh, decision which is target costing of course applying target costing uh, uh, is one main item will help the uh, organization into making uh, its own decisions about entering or rejecting entering a certain market and of course uh, you must understand first uh, sir that when you are to make the decision about uh, choosing to enter or not to enter the market uh, you may first um, target a profit which means the total revenue will be greater than uh, the total uh, cost uh, if your uh, revenue is 100 as an assumption and your cost is 80 you are going to accept to enter the market because you are achieving 20 dollars or 20,000 or 20 millions whatever um, this is very good but think about that sir when you have uh, a competitor and this competitor is uh, controlling his own cost well and his cost is about uh, 70 not 80 whatever the 70 is a thousands of millions whatever uh, so when uh, finding you entering the market as of a competitor he's going to make one thing one strategy is going to be lower his own price uh, below 80. Uh, this means sir uh, when we are uh, doing this we cannot compete with that we cannot go on with that so we are going to be out of the market so this is why we have to target the cost and this cost is going to be the competitor cost the market cost and uh, if you are to look to the last uh, given slide in this presentation you will find uh, the meaning of this when calculated uh, so uh, to do so sir you are when we are to calculate our target cost sir we are to calculate two sides the first side is the target cost which is related to the market as we mentioned earlier uh, and this is about to calculate it as uh, unit market price minus uh, the unit market price times unit uh, profit margin as of a percentage which is going to be given to you and the profit margin is a percentage based upon price which is going to be reduced from the price uh, to reach the cost uh, known as of target cost so uh, at the end it is going to be a unit market price minus the unit profit margin uh, uh, from this perspective we have to make a comparison we have to match it with our own predicted cost which is going to be the unit or the product cost and this cost is based upon the value chain uh, as of a visibility study uh, done earlier in our own facility or our own company and this is going to be based upon the value chain six levels uh, first level of course these levels are based mainly upon our customer and his own satisfaction first by r d research and development and second by getting the idea and then to manufacturing and then by marketing and then by distribution and then uh, by uh, selling and then after sale service uh, of course these steps are essential to reach any market and to deal with our own uh, customer according to that if you are reaching the unit cost or the product cost you can use it from the perspective of a total or a per unit there is no problem but make the target cost equal to it at the same time when doing this uh, comparison sir you can reach a one main item when our unit cost is below the target cost this means we are going to enter the market to accept entering the market of course you can take it from the perspective of cost or by matching it with the given price you can reach the required contribution so when we enter the market is when our contribution is greater than the contribution of the uh, targeted uh, whatever competitor or market so from whatever perspective you have to make the right decision uh, sir if you are to look to case 5a4 which is target costing we can come up with the um, uh, comparison between the tar the total cost of our product and the uh, desired target contribution 
related to the other uh, part, which is the competitor or the market. If you see, this is our total cost, sir, 13,320,000, and this is the target cost given totally uh, by getting the contribution to profit, which is 24,700,000, 24,700,000 times the 50%. This will lead to a 12,350,000. Uh, of course, by this comparison, you will find that our cost is greater, so we will reject. Or, from the other perspective, by calculating the uh, contribution to profit, which means the revenue by multiplying the 65,000 years to the price, and then um, uh, reducing or deducting the uh, cost, we will find that our contribution is going to be 11 a million three hundred and eighty thousand dollars when compared with the twelve three hundred fifty as of the desired contribution this will lead that our own um, part will be at a deficiency level which is a nine hundred and seventy uh, if we are going to a second level which means uh, not to accept the first result and not to retrieve and um, withdraw from the market or not to apply the product and get to the market. Uh, you, we can try to reduce our own costs, especially related to the manufacturing part, uh, according to uh, completing uh, or add another level from um, studying. And this means by getting the first level, which is a thirteen million three hundred and twenty, and then deal with the reduction required, and this reduction is going to be as provided to the case uh, related to the outsourced level, which is uh, a forty percent out of the five million, and this will lead to a two million dollars, and the saving could be fifteen percent. So by multiplying this to the two million dollars, we will find that we can save a three hundred thousand dollars will lead to uh, a, a total uh, after re reducing the costs uh, of 13 million and 20 dollars which is still not to accept because it's greater than the cost of uh, the uh, competitor or of the market which is the targeted one which is 12 uh, 350 uh, and the same if we are to calculate this according to the contribution revealed you will find that our contribution is going to be 11,680,000 this means we still at a deficiency level and not to apply level of your case sir if you are to apply uh, the third uh, part which means we are to modify our own cost by a new reduction but this time with payment to achieve this reduction so we are going to start from the application of number two, which is provided to us as 13, 20 million, because uh, it is uh, said into your case are implemented together. So you have to apply both cases, not going back to the start number, which is 13, uh, 300 and so on. So uh, if you are to uh, prepare our own calculations for uh, negative and uh, positive or to uh, reduce and to add uh, because we have to add the cost of applying the study which is going to be uh, at 220 and we have to reduce the cost that results from uh, modifying our own manufacturing perspective which is going to be by $900,000 this will lead to a $680 net reduction uh, accepted or applied this means that the total um, cost of our production is going to be at $12,340,000 this will lead to a less than the cost of our competitor or the target cost which is $12,350 and this means we have for the first time excess by ten thousand dollars that will lead to accept to uh, enter or to penetrate that market thank you